I want to welcome you guys to Pre-Calculus. This is Lesson 10.1. We're going to about talk about lines in the Cartesian plane. Uh, if you're hunting if for a lesson on lines and you're in Algebra 1 or 2, uh, this is not the lesson for you. You probably want to go find a lesson that's equivalent to those. This is Pre-Calculus, and so at this point in the course, we have actually already studied trig. I'm going to guide you through how we actually um, discuss lines <clears throat> and angles of inclination and how we find angles between lines in the coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get started. Father, I thank you so much for the student you've given me. Wherever they are, I pray for their blessing. Help me now to explain the material in a way that's understandable. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the lesson is called Lines. And there are two vocab words that we're interested in. They are inclination and angle between two lines. So what do I mean by the inclination? Well, I simply mean this. What angle does the line form with respect to the horizontal? And so since this line is flat, it has a slope of zero, I would say that this angle or this line forms an angle of zero degrees with respect to the horizontal. Here is a perfectly vertical line. And so it forms a right angle with respect to the horizontal. So this has an angle of theta equals pi over 2. That's our radian form of 90 degrees. Well, what if it's not horizontal and it's not vertical? Then it's got to be something else, right? Well, we've got the acute case where the slope of the line is positive, in which case we know that the angle of inclination is acute, which means less than 90. And if it's a negative sloped line, we know that the angle of inclination would be a obtuse angle, which means greater than 90 and yet still less than 180. And the nice thing about this lesson is that these lines are never going to have angle measures that are larger than 180. That doesn't make sense because the moment it's larger than 180, it flip-flops on the axis, and so then you're testing the other side of the line. Okay, so how on earth do we define inclination and slope? Well, it turns out that the beautiful uh, slope that we talked about in algebras 1 and 2 has a wonderful linkage between our trig function tangent. There's actually a linkage between the two. And so, in a way, this lesson's a throwback to Algebra 1. A non, if a non-vertical line has inclination theta and slope m, then the equation m equals tan theta is true. This is just wonderful. I mean, it's a way of taking uh, y equals mx plus b and just snatching the m, and then you can figure out what the angle measure is. Let me show you how to do that. Here's example one. Find the inclination of the line x minus y equals 2. All right, let's go ahead and put x minus y equals 2 into slope-intercept form. We get y equals x minus 2, and so the slope is 1. So therefore, using this rule, tangent of theta is 1. Well, since 1 is a positive slope, we know the angle is acute, and so it follows that the angle of inclination is the first quadrant from 0 to pi over 2. Theta is the arctangent of 1, which radian form is pi over 4, or 45 degrees. And so here's the equation, y equals x minus 2, and the angle of inclination is 45 degrees. It's just as easy as that. Example 2, find the inclination of the line, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Once again, let's get this guy into slope-intercept form. The slope is negative two-thirds, and a negative slope indicates an obtuse angle. We are dealing with an obtuse angle, which means theta is between pi over 2 and pi, so the tangent of theta equals negative two-thirds. Now, if you've gone through trigonometry, and if you've been following me, we've gone through trigonometry at this point, it turns out that if you take the arctan, you're going to get a negative value. So to compensate for that negative value, you're going to have to add pi, or 180 degrees. Well, in this case, pi, because we we got everything in radian mode. So <coughs> theta, in this case, is the arctan of negative 2 thirds plus pi. And that puts it into quadrant 2, which is exactly where we want it. 
So in radians, we get 2.554 radians, and in compensating for degrees, we get 146.333 degrees. And so there's our line, 2x plus 3y equals 6. It's just that easy. A negative slope means the angle is obtuse. A positive slope means the angle is acute. How does one find the angle between two lines? Well, we want to find this angle, which we'll call theta. Theta is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. Theta 1 is defined as the angle of inclination of the first line, and theta 2 is defined as the angle of inclination of the second line. Now, typically, we want to focus on which theta is larger. <clears throat> so by looking at this picture, theta 1 is the larger of the two angles, so we would define theta to be theta 1 minus theta 2. That's the angle that's formed between the two lines. Well, look what happens. The definition is tangent theta, and then we can replace theta with theta 1 minus theta 2, and then we use the difference formula for tangent. This becomes tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2, all over 1 plus tan theta 1 times tan theta 2, but here's the absolutely beautiful thing. We just return back to this formula here. The slope of the line is, by definition, the tangent of theta. So guess what? Tan theta 1 and tan theta 2 are simply the slope of the first and the slope of the second line. So we replace tan theta 1 and tan theta 2 with their respective slopes. Well, okay, why the absolute value? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, what if we get lazy and we don't really concern ourselves with which angle's bigger? Well, that's why the absolute value. It just forces it to be positive. Uh, if we're careful and we figure out that theta 1 is the larger and theta 2 is the smaller, then we wouldn't really need the absolute value because we would be calculating what's necessary. So here's the absolute value. And this is just a beautiful formula. It's a beautiful result. It's easy to calculate. We've known how to find the slope of a line since algebra. So now let's look at an example here. Find the angle between the lines. The first one is 2x minus y minus 4 equals 0. The second one is 3x plus 4y minus 12 equals 0. So let's put both of them into slope-intercept form. The first equation has a slope of 2. The second equation has a slope of negative 3 fourths. So I'm just going to plug them into this handy-dandy formula right here. Tan theta is the absolute value of 2 minus negative 3 fourths over 1 plus 2 times negative 3 fourths. So the tangent of theta equals 11 halves after doing the calculation. And this is a nice positive number. So the angle between the two lines, theta, is the arctan of 11 halves which is about 1.391 radians, or 79.70 degrees. It's just that awesome.